So again, in chapter 22, there are a few things to go over, but we're not gonna get in depth into anything other than what you're going to be tested on, what's gonna be on your final. Um, so chapter 22 is IV calculations. We talked about in chapter 21 about the different IV fluids. Now we're gonna learn how to calculate IV fluids. <clears throat> So the nurse is responsible for ensuring that the IV fluid infuses at the correct rate. Remember we talked earlier in the semester that the rate is expressed in milliliters per hour. So anytime we're setting a pump, it's got to be set in milliliters per hour. Um, if we are not able to use a pump, then we will calculate it in drops per minute, GTT per minute, in case you forgot from that first week what GTT means, it's drops. So if we don't have a pump available, then we calculate in drops per minute, and that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, so if we are infusing um, 3,000 milliliters over 24 hours, and you need to know how to calculate that in milliliters per hour, you would just take 3,000 milliliters and divide it by 24 hours to give you 125 milliliters per hour. So you may see some questions um, that say, you know, to run X amount of milliliters over X amount of hours, and that's just a very simple division calculation. Okay, so here's an example. Um, we have 4.5 grams of Zosin, 100 milliliters, NS, IV piggyback in 30 minutes, BID. That's a whole lot of information, a whole lot of words. Um, we need to pay attention to what exactly we are looking for. So if we have 100 milliliters, that's really what we need to pay attention to. And we want to run it over 30 minutes. Okay, so you can do this a couple of different ways to fill out, to find out your milliliters per hour. Um, so you can do 100, let's see here, 100 divided by 30, and that will tell you how many milliliters per minute. So then you would multiply that by 60 to get your milliliters per hour. Okay, so 200 milliliters per hour. Um, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Let me write this down and then I'll show you so you can take a screenshot if you need to. So 100 milliliters divided by 30 minutes. And then you're going to get, let's see, what was that? 100 divided by 30 minutes and you're gonna get 3.33333, et cetera. And then you're gonna multiply that by 60 minutes to get 200 milliliters per hour. So. There you go, in case you need to take a screenshot of that. Um, that is how you would do that calculation, okay? Um, you can also do it another way. You can take your total volume, okay, which is 100 milliliters, okay, 100 milliliters, and there are two sets of 30 minutes in an hour, okay? So you would multiply that by two, and you would get 200 milliliters per hour okay so you can do it either way you can do your total volume divided by however many minutes and then multiply by 60 to get your milliliters per hour or you can do your total volume times however many sets you have in an hour so if you have 30 minutes you have two sets of 30 minutes in an hour if it were over 15 minutes you have four sets of 15 minutes in an hour etc whichever way is easiest for you um, let's see. So don't worry about macro drop, micro drop, anything like that. Um, all of your problems on your exam and on your final are going to tell you how many drops per milliliter um, your tubing is. So don't worry about that. Um, let's see. So we can do this for primary solutions, we can do this for large infusions, small infusions, piggybacks, boluses, whatever, um, that we can calculate the drops per minute. So this looks confusing here, so let's go to the paper. Let's see here. Okay, so write this down, and if you have your cheat sheet handy, make sure you write it down on your cheat sheet too. Um, let's see, x drops per minute equals your total volume in milliliters times 
your drops per milliliter over your total time in minutes. Okay, so that's important. Your total volume has to be in milliliters. So if you are given a problem that has like one liter or something like that, you have to put it into milliliters, okay? Times your drops per milliliter. Um, this is a, something you're going to get in your problem. You won't have to figure that out on your own. And then divided by your time in minutes. So make sure if you're given something like over five hours, you're not writing five there. You have to divide it by, um, or you have to multiply it for your total time in minutes. Okay, so let's do an example. If we have an order for, um, let's see, 1500 milliliters of lactated ringers over 12 hours and your tubing is 15 drops per ml, okay? So now we're going to set it up just like this. So X drops per minute equals, my total volume is 1500 milliliters. My tubing is 15 drops per ml. And now I have 12 hours. So I need to find out what that is in minutes. So 12 times 60 gives me 720 minutes. Okay. And now you just do the calculation. So we have um, 1,500 times 15, and then divide that by 720, and we get 31.25 drops per minute. Now, if you can imagine giving 31.25 drops per minute, 0.25 of a drop is going to be incredibly difficult. I believe it's probably actually impossible. So we're gonna round that. Every drops per minute has to be a whole number. So you're gonna get 31 drops per minute as your final answer, okay? So let's do another one. Let's see here. Okay, if I have an order for 300 milliliters, um, let's see, to infuse over 40 minutes. Um, and my drop factor in my tubing is 20 drops per milliliter. Um, I'm going to just plug it into the formula. Let's see here. Okay, so X drops per minute equals my total volume of 300 milliliters times my tubing, 20 drops per milliliter tubing over 40 minutes. Okay, plug that into the calculator. So 300 times 20 divided by 40, and I get 150 drops per minute. Oops, 150 drops per minute. Okay, not bad, right? Um, okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint and see if there's anything else to go over. I don't think there is, but let's double check. Um, okay, so there's an example. You can do it in dimensional analysis, but I guarantee that it is easier to use this formula. So make sure that you have that formula on your cheat sheet, so that way you can use that. Um, all you do is plug in the numbers and solve. Um, <laughs> I believe that's it. Yep, that's all we're going to go over. We're not gonna talk about percent variance or anything like that in this chapter. Um, so that is it for uh, chapter 22.